Chapter 8 I was starting to visit European countries to improve our tactical marketing, the use of distributors, etc. Denmark needed some attention, and Torben, who had left Kenya and was now farming in Ashford, Kent, agreed readily to join me in Copenhagen. We were sitting at a medium-sized table in a hotel discussing Torben's suggestions when a man in his twenties came and sat at the end of our table. As was usual with us, Torben and I switched immediately into Swahili, so we could continue our talk without rewarding curious ears. After a few minutes, the stranger interrupted our talk. Hey, you'd better be careful, fellas. I understand every word you're saying, he exclaimed to our astonishment. He then revealed he was a member of the mad Major Hawes group of commercial soldiers fighting in the Congo. The use of Swahili had apparently filtered down to the Congo from East Africa, and he was quite familiar with it. He was on leave spending some of his earnings in Copenhagen. What he told us of the military actions in the Congo was mind-boggling. Torben and I listened, amazed at the stories. From Copenhagen I moved on to visit West Germany to talk to a new distributor there. Was is das? shouted the young immigration officer. Well, it's my passport, I answered. What do you think it is? Das is not a British passport. Well, what the hell do you think it is? Hey, you! he shouted at some Brits he'd just let through. Bring your passports back here. He laid the other Brits' passports alongside mine. Say you are, he said. Say you are different. And lo and behold, the lion and unicorn on the face of my passport, issued in Nairobi and possibly printed in South Africa, were of a slightly different size from those on the other Brits' passports. Over there, you, he ordered. To my astonishment and increasing anger, I was directed to a small cell containing a table and two chairs. In came an older German, who was just getting ready to sit down when a glamorous blonde Fräulein appeared, and she and he disappeared. About 25 minutes later, he reappeared, looking well pleased with himself, and started with what was obviously his opening question with any Brit. Where were you in the war? Sorry, old lad, I was too young to be called up. Ah, hmm. we had to fight at age 15. He found a file containing a list of names of dubious characters. He waded through names that were nothing like mine just for the pleasure of hearing my irritated responses and denials. Finally, even he started getting bored with our senseless charade, and he started flipping through my passport. Aha! he exclaimed. Oh Lord, what now, I thought. Born in Wembley, he shouted. Yes, I raised my voice also, as I wondered where all this was leading to. There you steal the cup from us. Yes, with the aid of the Russian linesman, he concluded triumphantly. Yes, I agreed happily. Ho, oh, ha ha, come with me, my friend, he guffawed. Grabbing my bags and with great good humour, he barged his way out through the immigration control and handed me over to my distributor, who seemed quite unconcerned by the delay. A Kalmyk executive who had visited us in Tring had been in tanks in the war and told me of his first visit to West Germany. Sometime in the 50s he was driving on the last stretch of road to the West German border. He came round a corner and ahead of him were the bright sweeping lights of the immigration post. All of a sudden he was back in his tank in the war, about to be raked by German artillery. He skidded his car round in the road and hurtled back the way he had come, until he could get his nerves together. Sometimes I've had nervous reaction to possible Mau Mau ambush sites, but nothing like that, poor man. In July 1965, Freddie Mills, the Lionheart, had apparently committed suicide. He had always showed indomitable bravery in the ring where he became world-liked heavyweight champion. 
Nobody could understand what had caused him to commit suicide. Soon after this, I was at London Airport, back from an overseas trip. The company car would not be meeting me, so I climbed aboard a black cab. The cockney cabbie said he was really on another job, but that could wait until he had delivered me to Berkhamsted. So off we went, and we started talking. He had been a successful welterweight, and I remembered reading about his bouts, including in Madison Square Gardens. He had a battered, amiable, but no-nonsense look. He just could not accept that Freddie Mills had committed suicide and was convinced something more sinister had occurred. As we approached Lower Amersham on the dual carriageway, we started to have a bit of a ding-dong with an open-top sports car. Eventually, we pulled up alongside one another at traffic lights. My cabbie ran down his window, leaned out and shouted, did your mother give you anything else for your birthday, little boy? The furious sports driver leaned over to reply. Then he saw the battered face and realised that any physical confrontation would be likely to end in him getting seriously punched. He turned away and drove off. I've never forgotten that remark and Jane has got tired of hearing my Did your mother ever? when I disapproved of another's driving. However, my version is said quietly, of course, and my car windows closed. <laughs>